Greetings. Thank you, and to my brother Steve, and uh, to his spirit, to Gil Noble. I guess one of the things we're going to have to realize one day that when the universal God energy pick you, it leaves no footprints. You don't have to be mm. validated by the New York Times or the Washington Post or TV One. That's a game. You talk about Dang. love, love, love. But most folk don't understand it because most folk tie love and the sex together. It really ain't about love. It's can you be lovable. Then I'm safe with you and you safe with me. And so when you understand that money is not power and education is not power, but information is power. If I give you bad information, I give you bad power. And so what this thug, pimp, hoe that runs this planet was able to do, he tricked us because he gave us 10,000 pieces of poison so we get hip and get rid of 9,991, and think we hip, but we don't realize if you keep them on, any one of those will kill you. Mm. So I hear people talking about addictions, addictions, addictions. The number one addiction, you see, where this goal is, you go to Las Vegas to the MGM Grant, you go up on the 35th floor where all betting starts at $10 million. And so when we understand there are levels, huh? you don't take no $2 bet up to the 10000 You do them a disservice. And so that's why I don't do that much radio. Because I don't know who just tuned in. You get calls. Your calls come in from the CIA. The calls come in. You open yourself up to be tricked. But somebody have to do that. And hope mm-hmm. when I throw it out there, somebody will get it. And when you talk about the 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 the, the, the various levels, the Moors. A lot of people know about the Moors, but they don't know the first eight presidents of the United States was Moors. George Washington mm-hmm. was the ninth president of the United States. This this country is built on Masonry, which is Christianity is Masonry. Jesus Christ was how old? Thirty three. Masons is what? You have thirty three. Got thirty three notches on them from the first notch to the twelfth notch is where the power is. Then it decreased, comes back at thirty, and at thirty two. No accident that from the time Jesus Christ was one to the time he was 12, they knew what, then he disappeared. And you know some old ignorant sexist man wrote that because you see nothing in that book where his mother was looking for him. I got ten children. And when the world one of them going to disappear at 12 and Lil's not going to go out looking for him. Nothing in that book. Then he come back at 30, it's nothing in the book where she said, boy, where you been? Where you been? Huh? We talk about we talk about fathers and and being at home and being there. Here's Jesus walking through the world and he see a dude fishing. Say, come with me. I'll make you fishing with me. He didn't go back home tell his family or nothing. Huh? That's, oh, that's thugism, man. You just up jump and leave. You didn't say, Mama, I got, I, got, I saw this person. Oh, hey, I just want to be with him. But it's hard when it's been passed down. All of the vicious, mean things I did to my body didn't come from the plane. It come from my mama. She didn't know. You look at a little baby. You give them a sandwich. They take the meat off the bun and eat it. We make them put it back on. You're never supposed to eat two things in your mouth at the same time. Eat, eat them peas and eat those carrots and eat that. No, the children eat one at a time if we leave them alone. And the reason I'm telling you this, this thing is moving so fast, we're not we don't have time now. Sit in the movie and you say, mm, I smell something like smoke. What have you ever smelled like smoke that wasn't smoke? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so what has happened in this planet, uh, the first president of the United States, 
was a dark complected black man. The other seven were mulattoes. Yes. Yes. John Hanson was the first one. You see, you cannot become a general in the Mason Army without being signed off on by president. So how could George Washington be a general before he was president? And so when you think about the Moors, then you take them back past the Moors. They were the Dogons. They came from that North Star. Mm. And that's where the Hopis came from. Yes, indeed. And little by little by little, and now you've got this new group of children that's in here, here that most folk don't even know, and the ones that see them, they end up killing them accidentally. They take them to doctors. They think they mentally something's wrong. Do you realize that the universe blessed you where well, your eyes were so good you could see germs, and you walking down the street ducking, and, and, and <laughs> they put you in the mental hospital. And, and and so consequently, I had one of my grand I have I have two, and those of y'all that's not familiar, but punch it up. The indigo children they hit this planet uh, May the fifth, <clears throat> uh, and so more, May the fifth, nineteen eighty-two. And that's what the the song was about, the fifth dimensions. The dawning of the age of Aquarius, because the guy wrote it, wrote it 15 years before the age of Aquarius. So that's why he named it the dawning. Mm-hmm. May the 5th, the year 2000. And what does that mean, the dawning of the age of Aquarius? It means for 6,000 years this planet's been ruled by darkness, which is male, and now light's fixing to take over. And when you look at that stuff that the... the the, uh, when they looked at this stuff and their calendar ended, Whew. and they said the world's coming to the end, December the twenty-first, two thousand and twelve. The Aztecs. Who was the Aztecs, man? The Aztecs were so hip. That's why I wonder why we worry about these Mexicans coming and taking your they ain't taking your job. The Chinese built the railroad. Black folks built this country. We built the yep. economic power. Huh? Yes, we did. I'm saying this to say this. Mexicans built Mexico. That's what you're dealing with when you see a Mexican walk down the street here. They didn't build that railroad with Chinese. And all over the world, Mexico City is a, a marvel. And when the Aztecs... When Cortez came over here from Spain with his white supremacy, and they saw buildings so big, they thought it was God. They bowed down and prayed to it. <laughs> yes, they did. Cities of gold. So the difference between us here in America and them Mexicans you see here that can't read or write or speak English, we never got to use the big machines that build Empire State buildings because the racist union wouldn't let them. They did. We never did get to dig the holes in the street and run the pipes through. They did. And it's in their blood. So that's what you look at when you see that Mexican walking down the street. The problem is they don't know it. Huh? Mm-hmm. When that white dude came over there and stole us from Africa... There was never a slave in the history of this planet as we know it that wasn't held in bondage 5,000 years, except us. They couldn't hold us in bondage 300 years. Why? Because when that thug come over there, he thought he was stealing workers. He was stealing scientists. I built the pyramid. I'm the one that planted the astrology and astronomy, the big dip of the little dip of the Milky Way. And we're just like our Mexican brother. We don't know who we are because we bought into this other thing. Death is better. Death is better. When them brothers and sisters jumped off them boats by the billions and then we walk around singing the song, Before I be a slave, I be buried in my bed. We're singing that while we're picking cotton. And it hmm. works. Why do they call hurricanes her? 
hurricanes. And the folks didn't know when the women's movement picked up, they said it's an insult to name something that destructive after women, so now they alternate the name, but it's too late. A hurricane is the spirit of a black woman. Mm. Every hurricane starts right there in West Africa, not almost in West, right there in West Africa where right the slaves was put on the ship. Mm-hmm. Hurricanes follow the same path that the slave ship followed. Yes, they do. No slave was offloaded the ship till it got to the Caribbean. No hurricane jumps above water till it gets to the Caribbean. Huh? It will hit this country and go all the way up the East Coast, all the way to Maine. And then it turns yeah. right and go north. Canada is right across the street from Maine. Why don't they go into Maine? Because Canada never treated a black woman the way America did. It's a universal mm. law. It's a universal law. When you see universal, then you know reading and writing is a violation of the universal God. It's heathenism. It's ungodly. It's unspiritual. How do you know that? Every time you get off the train plane in Tokyo or Germany, you can't read a German newspaper or Japanese. A universal God ain't never made nothing to change when you cross a border. Mm. Mm. This planet was put together. There were no borders. There is no such thing as intelligence and smart. It's wisdom. And then this thug changed to smart and intelligent, something that he could grade, give you a test on, and humiliate you if you don't pass and make you feel good if you do. Right. Uh, if he could grade wisdom, he could build a pyramid, huh? This is what this game is about. And then we sit and we pick up this and this and this. And and, and and the way I look at it is I work in a steel mill where the temperature around my furnace gets up to 130. And so fast that the perspiration come out of me, it dries so my blue uniform is white. And then I leave there and I go to the packing house and shackle some hogs. That's my second job. And then I'm invited to a party to your house, so I go home and change clothes. I got me a Neiman Marcus suit I put on and come to the party, but I didn't take a bath. And everybody in the party is wondering who that is thinking, including me. Hmm? That's America. America has left nothing but changed her outfit. She's never taken a bath. And now all at once we come through and want to clean this winch up with a new outfit instead of giving this winch a bath. And it's going to be a long time. So that's how I clean the outside. I have to clean your brain. So what we're looking at, <laughs> if you ever drove down the highway and you smell this dead skunk, <laughs> oh, we smelling is the stench. That's what America is. We smelling the stench from a dead hoe. And we stupid enough to believe this winch is still alive. America dead. We just smell the stench. That's all. So you can play all your games you want. You cannot rehabilitate this dead, trashy, impotent thug. And so this is what the game is. And so that new group of children, the, the indigo children, then came the crystal, and now this year comes the fifth child. And one of my granddaughters called me. She's a, she's a crystal. Granddad, I need to talk to you. <laughs> okay, okay, girlfriend. They come. They don't eat no cooked food. Hmm? Nothing with chemicals in it, huh? And this one that's fixing to come now, the uh, fifth child, you might shoot that one and it keep coming. Hmm? 
See, we're so entrapped to what this white racist thug can do. And, you know, one of the problems is black folks, you know, one day we need to apologize to white folks because the white folks, you mad, that's the wrong white folks. They couldn't help you if they liked you. Did Hitler declare war on Africa? Did he declare war on white folks? Was World War One white folks jumping on black folks? Was World War Two? See, we keep on to get all up in his face, huh? When Hitler's talking about a perfect race, the misfits, he wasn't talking about us. He's talking about white folks. He was not talking about us. And so consequently, the real white folks know who we are. The real yes, white folks do. know who the uncle the real white folks know who the Uncle Tom is. Not these punks, not these thugs. I don't know if I told you last week, because a lot of things I don't say on radio, a lot of things I know I would be stupid to say because I would discredit myself. And I'm not worried. I don't, look, my truth don't have to be validated by somebody digging me. I got respect for my grandmother, huh? Mm. I got respect for my grandmother the same way I'd have, expect somebody to have respect for my five-year-old grandchild. If she's sitting in a, in a, in a Ph.D. class, don't run that game down on her. Do you realize nobody's talking about it because most of them are white? you got millions of white, handful of black, that's hooked to drugs, that's hooked to heroin, huh? Because we pushed them, pushed them. Some folks didn't have the money, so I've got a granddaughter. She came out of, she did her last year in high school and also her first year in college. So now she go to college, she got three years. She get through that. And then she, she, she moves from there to to master's degree. And I remember when I was in college, huh? Whew. It's a violation of God to be up ninety minutes after the sun go down. Try college, huh? Three, four o'clock in the morning study. You think they don't know that the real people that run this planet are not up ninety minutes after the sun go down, okay? It's a game. So what was I taking? No dose, no nod. Ain't number drugs. Huh? No dose, hmm. no nod. God bless me, I tried to take it. I go to sleep putting it in my mouth. <laughs> so I looked around one day and this little precious granddaughter ain't nothing she ever wanted for. She didn't have she a heroin addict. And they all upset you, no, 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 no. We pushed her into that. Huh? We pushed her into that. Oh, y'all were so proud when she did this and so proud when she did that. We pushed her into that. The brain is not ready. How are you going to give me trigonometry when I haven't even finished arithmetic? The reason you don't hear about it is 98% of what I just said to you are white. Huh? Mm. All of a sudden, her teeth start falling out, huh? Stone heron addict. Where was they getting it? Oxycontin will make a fool out of heron. That's when they was getting it on the on the internet. They had a pharmacist that you could just write into. You know, they had to go to no doctor. Yes, they was. And then all once you get hooked. You know the net. And then you get out of college. And that little that little pimp money ain't there from the parents. And so now you come out in the street now, and you get heroin. And I, I, I remember the time when every other crime, it was somebody stealing money so they can get them some drugs. He's killing people. And now this government got heroin out here so cheap, you don't have to commit a crime to get high. Hmm? They put it out there for you. All you want When's the last time you swear it was somebody broke in somebody's house and stole and killed everybody because they was an addict, huh? It's a game. A game. You listen to black folks sit around, listen to somebody today talking about black on black crime. What is black on black crime? You white folk better listen to that. Well, we tired of black folk killing black folk. I tell my white friend, you better listen to that. We ain't saying we tired of them killing. We say they tired of them killing black folks. Then who be left? Black on black crime, huh? Who do you think killing Chinese in China today, tonight? Hmm? Chinese. 
Hmm? If we go to Italy tomorrow, who you think killing Italians in Italy? Hmm? Italians. And if 98% of all white folks that was murdered in America last year was murdered by white folks, if they ain't talking about white on white crime, how are you stupid enough to talk about black on black crime? Hmm? Exactly. And so out of the graces, you're not even aware that this thug, and I looked at research where the CIA and the Defense Intelligence, they got chemicals they can drop on a stadium or drop in the front line of battle and turn you into a cannibal, mm. turn you into homosexual. Huh? That's where we are. In 1951, listen to this now, what they did to white folks. In 1951, they just had to come out with it and admit it. The CIA took a village outside of Paris and put chemicals in the wheat that they make their bread with. And that whole village, damn it, went mad, thinking they was airplanes jumping off mountains and shit. That's where they are. Huh? And then we so out of it spiritually, they drop it on us and we preaching like, oh, we got to go in here and, and do something about this violence in the black community. You're not qualified. You're not qualified. Mm. Crime, read this article to you. I was shocked they put it in the paper. I've been knowing about it. I was shocked that's what in the paper. Crime linked to pollution. Polluted water can cause brain damage that turns ordinary people into violent criminals. So you think that's black thing, huh? Or you think they're hooking it up to the pipes, huh? Who said that? Roger Masters of Dartmouth College in Handover, New Hampshire. Listen to this. He compared crime figures from the FBI. See, the FBI keeps records of how many homicides happen in the black and Hispanic community because of pollution. Every month, they get a new one. And y'all running around there, I don't know why black folks are so... Yeah, blah, 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 blah. He compared crime figures from the FBI with information on industrial discharge of lead and manganese. The body needs manganese, but once you get too much, you kill your mama. And they spray it in the black community at night while you sleep. Huh? And then you look at all these crime figures and all of that, and you think it's a black thing, huh? And you get on these radio shows. And tell, radio shows is entertainment. Hmm? What qualifies you to say it? Emotions? He found a link between pollution levels and murder, assault and robbery, counties with the highest pollution level has a crime rate triple the nation's average. Huh? Huh? They put you in your food. Huh? One soda pop change your bloodstream. 10,000 acid. One soda pop changes your bloodstream with acid 10,000 times more than God meant for it to be. One soda pop changes the pH level. You'd have to drink 15 glasses of water to get it back to, to normal. Hmm? This is a game. You know, you got to be a heathen to play football or let a child play football. The, the most precious thing you got is inside your head, that brain. Huh? It's the brain that tells the heart to beat. Hmm? It's the brain that's the traffic cop that feeds the circle. Do you know your blood? You have 100,000 miles of blood vessels in your body. A hundred thousand miles could reach around this planet Earth four times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Four times, yep. And your blood make a complete cycle every 30 seconds, which means your blood is traveling 200,000 miles a minute. Huh? 
Huh? And they got you believing a jet plane is sad. They got you. They got. They got you believing that somebody can reduce you down to a nigga. Mm. And so we run and buy this. Hmm? And look at it, and you hit it. Love, 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 love. You be whatever you want to be. Once you find out the two power, the most powerful force in history, America, the black woman in the black church. Yep. 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 Talk about talk about them if y'all want to. It don't make no difference. That's how messed up America is. Neither one of them had to be perfect for us to win this battle if we know who they are. I was there in the forefront of the civil rights movement, huh? I was hmm. there, man. Ninety-eight percent of the people at the forefront of that movement, the greatest movement in the history of the planet, had reverend in front of their name before they had Ph.D. Hmm. 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 Reverend in front of their name before they had Ph.D. Huh? Now y'all play all the games you want with, with Islam and Taliban uh, and all that. That's cool. But there's never been a warrior produced to go up against the mightiest nation in the history of the planet and one like we did. Talk your bullshit if you want to. Eh? Hmm? The record's there. The record is there. Huh? King wasn't killed because of integration or segregation. King was killed because he became the first black person in the history of America to get in a position to determine public policy. Hmm? Bill Cosby, he was the darling of white America. The darling. Oh, the Jello, Jello made a billion dollars off of his commercials. They, they loved him so much. They had little white children hanging on his back eating tapioca out of his ears. <laughs> he was, Bill made a mistake and he didn't understand white supremacy. So NBC, which is owned by General Electric, NBC decided they was going to sell. General Electric decided they were going to sell NBC. And Bill Cosby said, I want to buy. And he had the money and the connections. And the real white boy said, what did he say? All right, we're punishing. Let's kill his son. His son's in California one night on the highway. And as he's coming off, we have a flat. Ain't nobody ever tried to rob somebody on the highway since Wells Fargo days. You, think you stop a stage. Why you going to stop a car? You saw the death. <laughs> if your job was to rob people on the highway. Hmm? Hmm. So it tells us he called this white woman. She showed up to help him change the tie. She had on high heel shoes, a mini skirt. In a mink coat. Do that sound like somebody helping you can change your time? What Bill Cosby know and the pain he must go through is he know that was the upper up of the line Mercedes. You got a flat, you just push the button, it changed his own time. Okay. And then they told us that uh, it wasn't robbery because Bill Cosby son had $6,000 cash. He had his credit cards, his cell phone. Hmm? And nine mm-hmm. months later, they bust a, a Russian immigrant who lives in America. They busted him in uh, in uh, Mexico City. When we check it out, we find out. Right. No, I mean, they bust him here. But when we checked it out, we found out that he was in Mexico City that night. <laughs> it's a game. It's a game. Huh? When... Uh, when Charles Barkley and all them thugs and uh, <laughs> Michael Jordan. By the way, Michael Jordan broke, huh? Hey, Michael Jordan gambled all this stuff. With. And the same thing with uh, uh, what's it, Donald Trump. Donald Trump ain't got no money. That's a front. They put a white boy out there and make all them white boys think that you can be as obnoxious as him and be a billionaire. Trump ain't got no money, man. Now, don't you? Don't some of y'all out there remember when Trump bought the the Eastern Shuttle? He lost it. <laughs> Yeah. The game they play. Huh? So it was the job of Charles Barkley and and Michael Jordan to deliver uh, to deliver Tiger Woods 
to the MGM Grant. Huh? The 35th floor, he was losing $10 million a night, okay? And he didn't suspect nothing because them other two thugs were sitting there playing cards and they would win every now and then. And, and the, the thugs, the people that ran him, when they beat, what you call them, when they split it, they get him a percentage, huh? And you remember the time when Tiger Woods could outplay God? And then for 18 months, he couldn't win a major? Well, let's look at the math. I lose $10 million tonight. I'm going to come play in your golf tournament. And I win. I make $1.5 million. I still owe you $8.5 million. So this is, son, here's what you do. Just just don't play the game. Don't qualify. Just don't show up. We'll give you $30 million, huh? That's what that was about. Huh? Huh? Uh, Kobe Bryant shaving points, huh? Then he got upset and said, "I'm not going to do that no more." And and he went into Denver, Colorado, to get knee surgery. Now here's a prime player in the history of basketball. <laughs> make more money in one hour than most will make all year. <laughs> And he tell me the the day he go to have that major surgery on his knee, he got sex on his mind. He's a guy get sex any way he want to get it. But he he got surgery, multi million dollar knee. Oh, that's why we punish you, boy. When you tell us you are not gonna do something, and remember, had he not changed his mind and said he will, hmm. He'd be in jail now. And the minute he changed his mind and said, okay, they treat that white girl, they treat that white girl like the devil. I said, yeah, but meanwhile, while we was checking her vagina uh, about this Kobe Bryant rape, we found three other different types of sperms in her, which, which had happened within 30 minutes. So that means, okay, all right. Okay, Kobe, thank you. Okay. Okay, put her in jail. It's a game. Huh? And so when you sit and you stop and think, Muhammad Ali, they couldn't get him to throw no fight, so they got everybody else around him. They got Sonny Listen to throw the fight. That's the way they were. Muhammad Ali going to beat Sonny Listen. And Sonny was so angry that he had to do that. When Ali was drawing his hand back, Sonny fell. That didn't that didn't affect white folk. They said, call it the phantom punch. They said Sonny was knocked out. Two blows before, but he was still on his feet. Hello, come on, y'all. Hmm? And, and when they got over there, the thriller in the jungle, <laughs> how Ali going to beat George Foreman? So they got George Foreman to lay down, and they resisted it. And those year fight fans, remember, they postponed the fight for a week because they still negotiate. <laughs> So George Foreman's manager said, okay, you give me $500,000. And they gave it to him, and two weeks later, they found him dead in Oakland. Now, George Foreman had finally wrote a book and said, uh, what happened? They put some stuff in his water, and he felt his body getting weak and weak and weak. And, and Angelo Dante, come on, y'all. Give me a break, huh? This is what this is about. This is what this is about. And to show you how they feel, Ali was the greatest human specimen since Rome, since the gladiators. And they took a little chubby, chubby white boy named Mr. Stallone that wasn't even shaped. And he did a movie called Rocky, and the one movie made more money than all of Ali's fights. Hmm? Fine. You go around the world and say, who's the greatest heavyweight champ in the world? Rocky, 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 huh? And the, 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 one of the thrilling fights, a thrill in Manila. What was, what was his name out of out of Philly? Joe Frazier. help me. Uh, Joe. Joe Frazier. Hmm? Joe Frazier lived in Philly. One of the great fighters. Oh. <laughs> they got a statue of Rocky in Philly, but they haven't got one of Joe Frazier. Y'all crazy. <laughs> Hollywood, Hollywood. I remember when uh, Bob Marley, uh, the office called, give me $40,000. 
to be his opening act for Bob Marley. It was so hip, man. I would have worked it for free, but it was one little thing involved. And it was at Harvard Yard, Harvard University Yard. Huge concert. And I turned it down, and Bob Marley was so beautiful and so lovable. He, he make more money in one day with a concert than I make all year. He got on a plane and flew to see me. Humble, Mr. Gregory, I'm just so sorry. I, my office said you didn't want to work with me. Uh, I just wanted to come and just said, I'm sorry, what have I done? I said, you probably don't even know. That even makes it worse. You, you did a... A song praising the Buffalo Soldiers, and you didn't know them thugs was the black folks in the cavalry who they sent west to kill off the buffaloes to starve the Indians to death. Hmm? Hmm. Like the greatest black college on the planet is Howard University. Howard University is named after a white general, Howard, who become famous for killing Indian children. Huh? Come on now. Hmm? Uh, huh? Come on, y'all. And so when you stop and think of this whole, hmm? uh, and so the universe, you know, looked. Booker T. Washington, he said, don't know, no, these Negroes don't need to be nothing but janitors. Hmm? And, 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 and just teach us how to do manual stuff. And their white folks loved him and loved him, he thought. New York Times, y'all can punch that up. <laughs> New York Times did a front page editorial. <laughs> when the last time you see that front page, they talk about how uh, Booker T. Washington comes to New York from the South. He's the president of Tuskegee and flunks his white women. <laughs> so you thought they like you, huh? And then he gets an invitation, paid him to come to upstate New York to speak. And at that time, Negro couldn't stay in the hotel, so this white man that brought him up there let him stay in his house. And this white dude claimed he caught Booker T. Washington peeping through a keyhole at 3 o'clock in the morning looking at his wife. And he beat him so bad, two weeks later he died back in Tuskegee, and they so embarrassed they never want to tell anybody what happened to him. Huh? So play your games. Play them fast. But recess is over. And this is a game, a game, a game, huh? Look at their codes. The one they really couldn't handle man, was Jack Johnson. That's when they was going 75 rounds, man, with bare fists. Yes. And he was the greatest. Because, see, the heavyweight thing is a sex symbol. Hmm? And he had white women, white women lined up. And he married one of them. And old white boys in the Senate said, let's pass legislation. We'll get him. He goes into Canada with his white wife all the time. So they put a bill on the law called the White Slavery Law, the Man Act, to take a woman across state lines for immoral purposes. So one of the senators said, but that's his wife. Any white woman that would marry a nigger is a hoe. <laughs> so they said, well, we'll put the books on. We'll put it on the books. And then soon when we get him and bust him, we'll take it off. And they, they meant that. And that's what got Tiger Wood all caught up. Tiger Wood had to do win four more to tie Jack Nicholas and five to win. And they brought him in and said, boy, you know you carried that white woman to to Switzerland, to, to Sweden to see your game? It's white slavery, boy. Run to jail. Oh, no, well, you try not to win no more. And last week, everybody thought he was going to win. <laughs> hmm. Oh, the Jack Johnson law, they forgot to take it off, so that's what they used. Hmm. They didn't take it off. They meant to, but they didn't. And then they showed you the story of Jack Johnson called King Kong. Do you two ever forget King Kong? Those of y'all haven't seen, go see it. See King Kong on top of the Empire State with that white woman in his hand. He a gorilla. That's how they looked at him as a gorilla with that little plushy white lady. 
They want me to take place in New York. Why go really in New York? Ain't no trees in New York at all. There ain't no bananas. What was in New York to symbolize that? Madison Square Garden, the, the boxing capital of the world. The codes, just look at the codes, huh? And that thing wins, man. That thing, I mean, it's me. And so, me and Bob Marley hooked up, and I just, I just loved his, his being humble, humble, humble. Not to me, he just humble person. And so we hooked up and become good friends. And when that little granddaughter of mine, granddad, 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 I need to talk to you about my mama, which is your daughter. That's how them crystals talk. How long she been crazy? I said, how old are you? I said, I'm six years old. I said, well, you can't claim credit for running her crazy. You're crazy long before you was born. Come on, girlfriend. I got to run and get a plane. What you need to talk about? Well, she wants me and my brothers and sisters to say thanks and yes, sir, and no, sir, and, and, uh, and yes, ma'am. And I said, I'm going to talk to granddaddy first. I said, go tell your mother. I said, she a fool. <laughs> Nobody say thanks but a chump. A person with no spirit. Hmm? Uh, yeah, tell her to pull out her Christian Bible and see if Jesus ever said thanks. Tell her to pull out her Christian Bible and see if God ever told you to say thanks. It says, humble yourself. Huh? See, the mob will tell you thanks and blow your car up. Humbleability don't tolerate that, okay? Wow. Humbleability. Humble yourself. Hmm? And so the whole game, the whole game, they told you a little child will lead them, huh? And so I'm in Europe a couple of weeks ago, and white folks, oh, wow, man. And Mr. Gregory, we're so glad you're here. We want to, I know you know about the, the Aztec calendar. I say, come on, y'all, don't waste my time. Y'all ain't never listened to what a Mexican says. Come on, white folk, give me a break. <laughs> These Mexicans have been dead for 1,400 years. <laughs> you don't listen to Mexicans now. <laughs> Please. The Aztecs. Uh, I met with the Aztecs, with the number one track of blood uh, about five years ago. Some Indians brought me, and the sister came, so you got to come. Someone want to honor you. and It was that track of blood, just like I was meeting a, a Dogon, like I was meeting a Moa. Huh? He couldn't speak English, and I couldn't speak whatever Aztecs talk. But he brought me two crystal skulls, and they made me an elder. Wow. And it was, so they said, you care for anything? I said, to, I like some watermelon. I was up in up in West Point, Texas. Hmm? Uh, <laughs> and they got two trucks of watermelon pulled up. I didn't know that's how they treat elders. <laughs> you got to be careful what you ask for when you're an elder. <laughs> and uh, so the Aztec calendar ran out. The <laughs> crystal skull, you look at the skull. None of your computers would work. Hmm. Uh, if it wasn't for crystal. That's the memory. That's why them white folks all over the world, they down there in them caves down there trying to find a way to make them, 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 them crystal talk. Then they'll find out about the creation. It's been billions of dollars. They got trains run from California. It's about 15 years old now. From California, New York, in 48 minutes. <laughs> they got one runs underwater hmm? from New York to Europe in 58 minutes. Yeah. What? Mm, with your tax money. Huh? Uh, my friends brought it to me. I didn't know there was aliens. <laughs> I just thought it was a white boy. That's why I tell black folks, y'all better be careful. Y'all think y'all can whoop all these white boys. Y'all better be careful. Because I'd ask the white boy, I said, well, when they come to pay me a visit this week, will I be able to get on the ship? And he said, sure. <laughs> he didn't say, let me check. <laughs> so I said, a little puny white boy, play a little flute. <laughs> y'all better be careful out there in the park. <laughs> you beat and jumped on something. <sighs> so they gave me a book. And 
I saw it seeing things was whew, incredible. But that's what this is about. Y'all think y'all are here by yourself? This white boy think he got it all by the reason this white dude, the real one, I ain't talking about these little chumps, y'all know. The real one. See, white ain't a color for attitude. And if you ain't got trillions of dollars in the bank, you know, you can't have attitude. That's why I say y'all wrong at the wrong, that's the wrong people. Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth, that's my type of white folks. She makes $360 million every 24 hours, just interest on her money. Now, them be white folks, and they don't play. She ain't godly. She ain't spiritual. Mm. But she don't lie. She say, we're going to war to protect our interests. She mean that as an interest, huh? My queen. Hmm? But the interesting thing about my queen, Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth, <laughs> see, a democracy is a system where the least among us participate on how they're going to be governed. You don't have to go to Harvard and read all that old crap about what a democracy is. A republic is where a handful of elite, aristocratic old men determine what's good for all of us. So now, it's just easy. A democracy, huh? hello, is where the least of us determine how we're going to be governed. Everybody participate. A republic, huh? Is where a handful of elite, aristocratic men. Okay, those of y'all that's listening to me, do me a favor. Raise your right hand. Come on, raise your hand, boy, and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Hello? They put it right in your face. Hmm? <laughs> this is a republic. <laughs> That's why they pass laws. And so you can put any amount of money you want to put into a campaign. Nobody's going to do a damn thing about it. That's, this, this is a republic. We, we run this, huh? And then white supremacy. I mean, them Hollywood movies. The number one killer of young black folks in Jamaica, as we talk right now, is not uh, drive-bys or or crack or drunken driving. It's bleaching cream. Bleaching cream, huh? They're trying to get legislation now passed to keep that mean bleaching cream that comes out of Germany. And you go to you go to make a day so how man how man come on man stop that monitor. Y'all don't even own one major hotel in this whole country, y'all around here talking black, huh? Bleaching cream, huh? The number one killer of Chinese women in China is bleaching cream that the white supremacy teacher that yellow ain't enough, huh? Yellow ain't enough, huh? And so Take the information, and like you said, man, you can get it from anywhere. There's a whole lot of people that have it, but they don't give it to you because you haven't qualified. I had black folk coming up to me when I went on my first 40 day fast. So come up and seeing them on the corner all the time. I never seen them drinking or cussing or nothing, but they were just on the corner. Never had a job. Don't nobody work but a fool. It's a violation of God to work, huh? The richest people on the planet they never had a job. Prince Elizabeth ain't never had a job. Prince Charles, one of the richest white boys on the planet, he ain't never had no job. You got more telling your baby finger than he got in his hole. And if we gonna walk around to the bottom in the black community, ain't no black man at home. Well, we ain't home when we home. Jack the Ripper had a mother and father at home, huh? Mm-hmm. Jack the Ripper. Hmm? So when you stop and think about them awful things we say about black women. The problem is, I ain't with you, huh? Hmm. Them scientists that put the nuclear bomb together and changed the rhythm of the planet, they, you can't get no more family value than the mafia, you thugs, huh? huh? Mama Mia, <laughs> go to church every morning and say <laughs> communion. Mm, father, I killed my last night. Please forgive me.
me quick because I got 10 more I got to kill for lunch. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> and then you black folks, all y'all want to sit around and want to use God as a pit bull. You ought to be here. You're God to take care of him. Come on, God, ain't your pit bull. Now y'all sit around talk and talk and let your children go to war and kill people that ain't never done nothing to you but a white cop shoot your mother in the back and you ain't going to do a damn thing about it. Come on, y'all. Stop playing these games, huh? Huh? Do you know how many thousands of black cops we have in America? Have you ever turned on the phone or turned on the news, I mean the TV, and see a white family crying because you Three black cops <laughs> shot my husband and my son and my daughter in the back of the head 14 times. Hmm? Why do you think? How come you think black folks don't do that? You think they more spiritual? You think the cops are better trained? No. They got enough sense to know the white folks ain't going to tolerate it. Huh? So y'all come and talk all that trash and talk all that stuff. You tolerate anything. Hmm? If you get through talking trash. Why? Because when you accept injustice, you become unjust. When you live with filth, you become filthy. And if you go pass a paper mill, you've never smelled nothing that stinks like a paper mill. But the people who work there don't smell nothing. We black folk been working with this hole for so long, we don't smell nothing. We don't even smell death flipping up on us, huh? So y'all go on and talk stuff, and, and you better do it quick, and you better be it fast, because recess is just about over. And so somewhere, you know, you just ask yourself a couple of questions. Mm-hmm. Black folks is 12% of a nation that's almost 300 million people. We're 12%. And 87% of everybody in America that should be on kidney dialysis machines, just black folks, and them numbers don't bother you. <laughs> y'all think y'all go, y'all talking stuff. How you going to say something? We're coming to black. You don't qualify. Hmm? What blows your kidneys out? And don't say it's a black thing. They don't have kidney dialysis machines in Africa. Not because they do, but they don't need them. What blows your kidney out? Fear, paranoia, and anguish. Angry, 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 angry. Well, you do number 10 of your killer, your kidneys. Hmm? So what you need to straighten out? Dallas? No, 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 no. What, what cools you live out? Awareness and gentleness. Awareness and gentleness. Awareness and gentleness, okay? Awareness and gentleness. So when I can enslave you and run you through this stuff here and take your God and switch it with mine and, and you get hostile and mean and bitter, mm-mm. you ain't messing with nobody's living kidney and brain. Hmm? That heart is so important. When I put evilness and meanness in my heart, that blood comes out your heart and circulates all the way around your body, including your toenails, and that's what you send through your body. Hating up on this punk, this thug, huh? What cools your liver out? Awareness and gentleness, huh? That's what all the churches said. I I never been to no black church where they had to pick up your gun and go get them, even if they had guns. Because <laughs> most folks don't know a gun in the Bible in the same house. <laughs> but you put the gun and you cancel the Bible out, hmm? Awareness and gentleness. Liver, liver, liver. Uh, whew, my liver. Uh, what blows it out? Cirrhosis of the liver. Oh, anger, rage, depression. Uh, depression, anger, mm, rage, depression. What cools your liver out? Kindness, kindness. And balance. Oh, you can't be kind, so you take all the more dirty pills, all the more nasty pills that the pharmacists give you that tell you they have side effects, including death. Hmm? Lung, what if you got so much asthma? Like, why you got so much asthma? What, 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 what does it call that? Grief? Hmm? Sadness and shame. Hmm? 
shame, shame, shame. What? Grief? Man, I went to funerals and nobody told me grief was wrong. Yeah, grief, grief, grief is a violation of God, especially if it goes over 40 days. Hmm? I knew Coretta King the last 12 years of her life. She never ate nothing but raw food. What killed her? Grief, grief. White boy played Superman. Superman, he had an accident riding a horse. He eventually paralyzed and he died. And 18 months later, his wife died from, from lung cancer. And so she didn't smoke. She didn't know. Grief, grief, grief. Hmm? Grief. Asthma, grief. you are always grieving. Well, sadness, shame. You got to be ashamed to let somebody else control your faith and destiny. And all you black folks, y'all need to stop saying, our community, you ain't never had a community. A community is where you control your banks, your economics, huh? You control your police. You control your education. You don't control nothing. That's why it's called the hood of neighborhood. What the hood is something you put on your head and you're ashamed of something. And when they get ready to execute you, they're ashamed of what they're doing. So they hide your face so they can't see you. Hood. The Ku Klux Klan. As much as they thought God called them, they were hood because they were ashamed. They didn't know it. Their spirit knew it. Hood. You live in a hood. Huh? A hood where a cop can come in and, and blow that grandmother away in, in, in Atlanta. Went to the wrong house. 92-year-old grandmother. And we had a black man, a black police chief, and they sided with the white boys. And, and so that black daughter, oh, black sister, thank you. And the black reverend went to the boy's house with kindness and balance, huh? Gentleness. And he broke down and said, yeah, yeah, the cops came, knocked over my door and said, they just killed a black woman by mistake. And they needed me to say I had bought drugs from her. Hmm? And then he went and held a press conference. Hmm? Not the black mayor, not the black police chief. Got him, hmm? The sister, the brother, huh? And then all Atlanta was shamed for a few minutes, huh? So you black folks let your children go to war to fight for this dirty wench. And you think you won't be punished, huh? I ain't talking about God. I'm talking about the universal order. And brag about it, huh? Yeah, Tony, Tony, Tony's a, oh, God, was he a good soul? Look at the medals. What they don't tell you is when the prisons of war was coming back from Germany to the POW camps here. They didn't put none up north. They put them in the south to punish them white folks. Put them in the south. And when they was coming back um, from the, well, they had, they had black MPs. And white MPs that was guarding them. When the troop train stopped on their way to the POW camp, uh, the white German soldiers and the white guards with them could get off the train and go in the restaurant and eat like human beings. The black uh, uh, that was guarding them had to stand outside and eat like they were dogs. Huh? And that didn't bother them, didn't bother you. Huh? We had play your games. And then when they got to the POW camps within a week, the Germans was calling the black soldiers, nigga, nigga. <laughs> They learned it from the white boys. <laughs> Can you imagine a Jew being stupid enough <laughs> to go to war with Hitler and the Nazis to kill people for and guarantee them rights that you don't have yourself? Hmm? And I wish you Negroes would listen to that little Christian song, Amazing Grace, who black folks love it. It's one of the filthiest songs black people could sing. Filthy, 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 filthy. And when you sing that, I know you don't know God. Where'd that song come from? This is a white dude. The number one slave trail trader had a reputation all over the world, but he just blow your brains out just because you didn't move fast enough, slave. Vicious. There ain't no God. He came up in the 
Methodist church and his father was a preacher and he rebelled against it. And one day he was out on this little pleasure boat and he saw this storm. Well, he was a man of the sea, so he knew he ain't never seen. So he knew he was going to die. And he jumped all the way back into his religion, fell on his knees and repented. And said, God, if you spare me, I'll repent. I will, I will, I will tell the world what a vicious, ungodly human being I am. Mean, I'll write books and and the, the, the storm left, and he wrote books, and he wrote the song "Amazing Grace." Amazing Grace. Oh, sweet. Thank you for forgiving a wretch like me. My mama, stupid enough to sit in church and say, she didn't know what a wretch mean. A wretch is one of the filthiest things. And he said to his God, thank you for forgiving me. Huh? And you sitting there singing that filth? You ain't never been a wretch. Well, let's switch it around. Let's say he wasn't a slave. Let's say he was a woman and he was the number most vicious prostitute that ever lived. He killed his trick, his dons, his and then all at once she repents and she writes the same song. Amazing grace, how sweet. Uh, and thank you for forgiving a hoe like me. Can you imagine your black mama sitting in church saying thank you for you ain't never been a hoe. Mama, he's just a stupid, insane thug for buying into this crap. The queen Still a queen now, but they covered it up with all of their crap, huh? This is where we are. Hmm? This is where we are. Please, please. My mama, she didn't know King James was king of England. Hmm? She didn't know King James was such a weird, strange homosexual. He hated women so bad he killed his mama. Hmm? His lover was Lord Buckingham, who Buckingham Palace is named after. <laughs> My mama didn't even know that 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 Jesus' father, J- uh, James, was killed the same way he was. Huh? I keep telling people, if my mama walked in to where you, you think she was just spit out of God's mouth, that's how precious and nice and kind my mother was. But if you try to convince my mother that Jesus Christ wasn't a Christian, she would stomp you to death because her ignorance didn't permit her to know that Christianity never happened until a hundred years after Jesus was was dead. And unless you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you'll never end it. Come on, Jesus came in here, Jew. (laughs) Come on, y'all. So somewhere, you know, somewhere, and so grief will just tear up your lungs, sadness, shame. You know how shame you got to be to tell your son, be careful when you walk out in the street, be careful, be polite to this cop that might kill you. Be polite, huh? Hmm? Whew. What wipes out all the problems in your lungs? Courage, righteousness, love. And being lovable, huh? Being lovable. Hmm? So somewhere, you sit quietly. You all run around looking for something. It's in you. Queen Elizabeth make three hundred and sixty million dollars every twenty-four hours. Just interest on her money. I've got a little welfare uh, cousin, niece in St. Louis. Stay drunk. You make the drugs, you take it for you. Finish. But if she sit on a bench next to Queen Elizabeth, they both breathe in the same amount of oxygen because to the universal God force, it don't have kings and queens. Universal God made men and men made kings. Universal God for us made women and men made queens. The difference between a man and a king and a woman and a queen is the way you wrap the gift. Oh, I meet your sister and I said, oh, Phil, the great day. Oh, I love you, dear. Oh, Jesus Christ, I love you. <laughs> so I go to Target and buy her, her outfit. 